Good evening, family. Good evening. I was asked to share with you on the subject of being encouraged by the love and grace of God. In reflecting over these past few days, and even as I stand before you now, I contemplate how unconscious I have been in my daily life on the matter that is so central to my very being. I recently came across pages from a journal I had written about 16 years ago. Sunday, July 7th, 1996, entry. Mark's mother, Nancy, called and said that Mark had AIDS. Four years at Fisk University had cemented our relationship. Post our baccalaureate were, were weekly phone calls and a dream trip to Athens with my best buddy, Mark. Monday, July 8th, entry. Nancy said that Mark was getting worse. I was going to see my friend. I had amassed enough air mail, airline miles to take a flight. Tuesday, July 9th, entry. Flights between July 10th and July 21st were all booked out of San Diego, Ontario, Los Angeles, Long Beach, and Orange County. I was getting upset because all I could think about was what his mom said about him slipping fast. But what was to follow in my journal entry was evidence of my being encouraged by the love and grace of God. Just one sentence later, I wrote, I let go and let God. I went to work and when I got home, I called the airline again. Praise God, I got a flight. A path had cleared. The next hurdle was to locate those mileage vouchers which were needed to take the only available flight on July 13th. Wednesday, July 10th, entry. No luck today, I'm getting nervous. Then another path cleared. Thursday, July 11th, entry. Called United and they extended my deadline an additional day so I could find those vouchers. I found those mileage vouchers. Saturday, July 13th, the day of travel came and I needed to mentally prepare myself for what I would find in meeting Mark, as well as the uneasiness I felt in hearing that there was a torrential rainstorm that I would need to face on my two hour drive to Columbia, South Carolina. Yet another path was cleared. God took care of the rain. There was not even a drop. Entry. Nancy took me to the room where he was lying in bed. His mom asked him if he knew who I was and he did not respond. She asked him again, insisting that he respond but as if he was ashamed or embarrassed, he looked away. So I asked him, do you know who I am? And with a glint in his eye, he, he nodded his head yes, and turned up the corner of his lip as if to smile. I reminisced with him over our 12 year friendship I sang songs from our days in Fisk's, Fisk University's Black Mass Choir and his favorite song, Bread of Heaven, Bread of Heaven, Feed Me Till I Want No More. Yeah. Yeah. By the end of the day, I asked Mark if he was getting tired to fight and he nodded yes. At that moment, I came face to face with my emotions but I bear witness of God's great timing 
because on the following day, Sunday, July 14th, I went to church and I was touched and filled with the spirit from the message. It was titled, 99.5% won't do. God needs 100%. I was being encouraged by the love and grace of God. I returned to the house convicted and I asked Mark if he wanted to pray and he nodded yes. I prayed for God's forgiveness and grace in our lives, for comforting Mark and reminding him how much he loves him as his child. Monday, July 15th, entry. I reminded Mark that I loved him today and that I always will. I asked him if he felt right with God and he nodded yes. I reminded him to continue talking to the Lord. I told him if it gets too hard that I would understand if he had to let go. I told Mark that I would be leaving the following morning at 3.30, but that I would see him to say goodbye. I touched his face and hands and I told him I loved him. Tuesday, July 16th, 3.30 a.m. Entry. Mark was awake. I told him that I had to go and again that I understood if he had to give up the fight. I told him if he did, I would see him in heaven where we would make a few more memories together. By 5 p.m. I had returned to California. At 10.45 p.m. Nancy called and in a quivering voice she simply said he's gone my journey entry on July 16th 1996 ended with giving thanks to God I was profoundly encouraged by the love and grace of God Just this past week, I was reminded of how life can be fraught with such struggle, pain, and profound disappointment. I received a call from the mother of a student who expressed her concern for her son in light of receiving news from her doctor that she has a one in five chance of beating the cancer. She said, Mrs. Mears, I pray to God about calling you. I need you to look after my son. God has me. And for 10 minutes, she was my community voice, speaking of her love for the Lord, how central her faith is, and how encouraged she was by the love and grace of God. In reflecting upon my life, God's grace has been there to meet me during those shortfalls. He has shown me over and over again surprises and possibilities of his works when I have opened my hand and heart to him. In fact, the totality of my life as a Christian has always been wrapped in God's love and grace. And that is the encouragement. Least I forget that he is the manna. Despite it all, through it all, I pray that you are encouraged by the love and grace of God as I have been.
No hurt He cannot hear All things are worth According to His perfect will No You're going through. Remember, God is using you for the battle. It's not yours, it's the Lord. There's no sadness. gracious and merciful God, thank you for the words of encouragement, for the reminder that you are our battle fighter, that we can go to you in times of crisis, that we are unified in your son Jesus Christ, yes. that there is no weapon, weapon that will be formed against us that will prosper because you are our God. Yes. 
You are our protector. Yeah. You are our provider. Yeah. You are our encourager in the midnight hour, in the yes, 3 a.m. hour, in the 5 a.m. hour, yeah. when we take flights from the east coast to the west coast, when yeah. we weather the storms of life, when we go through hell we didn't ask for, when we become a friend to the friendless and a hope for the hopeless, we are still encouraged by who you are and who you will always be. So we thank you for the vision. We thank you for your place of hope and trust in our lives that we can build a relationship like a bridge over troubled water. We thank you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I want to thank our friend, Michelle Mears, for such a powerful word of encouragement. Amen. 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 I want to thank uh, Kathy Bailey Cunningham for bringing it on home. And we always give praise to the New Hope Choir. You all are absolutely amazing.